try this right now. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Intimate personal details. Man, that's crazy. How challenging was it for you to get access to the chat logs here? Literally like five minutes. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing. I just had my iPhone hacked by one of our researchers and the TLDR version, Apple security is not as strong as you think it is. 70% of apps uh, leaves at least one secret, 1 1.8 billion apps on their app store. So that's more than a million potentially vulnerable apps out there. Our team did a first of its kind large scale investigation of the app store and found your secrets are getting leaked at a mind blowing rate. For as long as I can remember, Apple marketing has been that they don't get viruses and are very secure. Hello, I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. <laughs> I have that virus that's going around. Apple has differentiated themselves, number one, with ease of use and the whole experience. And then they started working with security, that if you were using a Mac product, whether it was a phone or a computer, you were gonna be in a secure environment. And lately what they've been marketing is privacy. They've been saying, if you're using one of our products, your privacy is much more secure. We're vetting it. We're giving you the tools to be able to protect it. And that also means longer battery life. It means a better experience. Uh, the public perception that Apple's safe, I think, is actually kind of holding up for a while. They're really dedicated to like security, privacy. They do above average in like a lot of different things. But there are some categories, I think, where Apple has maybe like maybe below average or average security uh, where they're not putting enough efforts to. Which is why up until recently, I, like many Apple users, never worried about my device's security. And that brings us to our investigation. Uh, who are you and what do you do there at Cyber News? I'm Aras Nazaros. I'm an information security researcher at Cyber News. We have our own dedicated research team where we uh, research a lot of things related to information security how secure is uh, certain data, how secure are certain apps or services. Why did you decide to start looking into the Apple App Store? We have done a similar project like two or three years ago into Android, into Google Play, and we found quite a lot of secrets there. So we kind of just wanted to check if like it's similar with iOS. So what are secrets? Sensitive information. So anything you wouldn't want uh, to publicly show, passwords, API keys, endpoints, those credentials are often used to uh, breach company infrastructure and also get uh, user data from companies as well. All right, a quick definitional detour for all the other normies like me out there. In app security, API keys are like secret passwords that apps use to prove they have permission to access certain data or services. And endpoints are specific URLs or paths within an API where an app sends requests to retrieve or modify data. It turned out it was quite easy to both get to the secrets and actually find quite a lot of them. iOS apps are basically like distributed as zip files. So you just extract them and you just check every text file for like a password. Is this even legal? against Apple's terms, terms of service, uh, scraping their app store. But like in terms of like actually accessing passwords inside, it's publicly published. In most countries, there's like no laws preventing you from just like checking what's inside an app. Once we figured that out, we wanted to do it at like a larger scale to have better statistics for it, to not have just like 10 apps uh, and 10 of them are leaking secrets. We wanted to have like big numbers. All right, how did your investigation start? We first kind of needed to find names for apps that we want to download or like IDs uh, on the App Store. So it turns out there isn't one centralized list of all the apps on the App Store. Our team had to write a program to create their own. We would just have a war list, Apple, Leg, Children, Sports, and we would run a search with each of those uh, keywords uh, and we would just take note of every app that like appears because there's no way to just get a list of all the apps on the App Store. It was quite easy through like their API. It only took like a couple of hours to have a list of like half a million. But are we talking like small scale apps or really big, enormous corporate apps? A combination of both the biggest apps and the smallest apps as well. <laughs> so one of the hardest parts was figure out how to download 100,000 apps, 200,000 apps. Uh, we ultimately went to for 150,000 just because of like time constraints, but we could have like scaled it up even further. How exactly does someone download eight terabytes of apps from the App Store? That is, if you don't feel like spending the next decade of your life doing it, you figure out how to automate the process. First, the team tried plugging an iPhone into a bad USB or rubber ducky. 
basically an automated keyboard they'd set up to automatically go to the app store, download an app, upload it to a cloud drive, delete the app, then download another, and so on and so forth. But that method proved to be unreliable and slow. Go figure. So in the end, they figured out a different solution that worked at scale and way faster by uploading the apps from the app store directly to their cloud storage. And how did the scanning process work? Apple's like iOS apps come in a package called like an IPA. The way you would scan an app, you would extract it as you would a zip file and see like every file that's in it, write a script to go through every file that's inside that app. Uh, and check for like thousands of different keywords. What we used was uh, partial matching. Uh, so basically we could scan for like part of a keyword, keywords like password or pass, and it would match like AVS password or password number two. We had like a list over a thousand keywords and some of them were like endpoint, API, password, key, and once one app is done, it's deleted. Uh, repeat the process 150,000 times. All right, so walk me through how your research unfolded. We found that basically 70% of apps contain at least one secret. A lot of apps contain way more than one uh, secret Shut as well. Shut up, that's crazy. Uh, if we do like some uh, quick math, around 70% of apps leaves at least one secret in our findings. Apple claims they have like 1.8 million apps on their app store. So that's more than a million, uh, maybe like 1.2 uh, of potentially vulnerable apps out there. Let that sink in. Out of a sample size of 150,000 plus apps, including some of the app store's most popular, our team was able to extract sensitive private user secrets from 70% of them for a grand total of 815,000 secrets revealed. Holy What does this vulnerability mean for the average iPhone user? without any like confirmation from the user uh sometimes just like steal money from you peer into like private conversations on apps that are like not end to end encrypted and also like expose their data stored in plain text we did find 19 apps that uh, leaked like stripe credentials so those could be used to both obtain credit card information and also authorize payments without user consent even could also get private messages from people uh between people you could get like private photos that you saved in the cloud. The impact really varies greatly and it also depends on what you value the most money or your privacy of what you do online. Shocking, but all pretty technical and theoretical so far. But then Aris decided to do a real world demo that actually scared the hell out of me. So I want to give you a little bit of a demonstration of what it means for an actual user. It was one of the apps that uh, we found leaking secrets. We found that we were able to access uh, chat messages between users uh, in real time. And I just want to show it to you. So one of my colleagues also has the app. Uh, How about you text on something? And so theoretically, when I send this, you're going to be able to see exactly what I send your colleague. Yeah. Okay. Uh, testing, testing, one, two, three. Wow. <laughs> Intimate personal details. Uh, I'm jealous of Aras. Here. Okay. Thanks, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> you got very good air. <laughs> wow. Man, that's crazy. So once you identified that this particular app was revealing secrets, how challenging was it for you to get access to the chat logs here? Uh, literally like two lines of code and, uh, like five minutes. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing. It's crazy. Just the idea that we have no idea how many apps on our iPhones, of which I have one and am a daily user, might compromise us in this way is really concerning. You know, I never imagined that this might be possible. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, and it is maybe more common than you think and probably would want it to be. Hold on a minute. Apple is this giant company with a reputation for good security. Surely they must have systems in place to prevent this sort of thing, right? How good is the Apple App Store's vetting process for new apps? 
first you pay Apple for a developer license. You develop the app. Then to submit it, you usually need to use Apple's hardware as well. You can just use like a Windows laptop to submit the app. Then you also need to fill out like a whole like review, basically give information about the app, how different things in the app work. Then you need to create like a test account for Apple's employees to actually like log into the app and check the functionality, like quality assurance, making sure that your app works and doesn't break. And yeah, like if Apple likes it, uh, they'll approve it and your app's gonna be on the App Store. So to your knowledge, there isn't necessarily someone like you on Apple's side who's really sort of just pressure testing the app, doing a penetration test, whatever, to make sure that it's very secure. Uh, I don't think uh, any app goes through like a penetration test. Maybe like the most popular ones, but probably not something that is done on a day-to-day -day basis. The question is, who's responsible for it? In other app stores, it's the developer. It's their job to vet their application, to tell you what they're doing and to self-police themselves. Apple does not take that approach. They're gonna look to see what your code is doing and they're gonna run that app. And it's their job to vet that application before they put it on the App Store because that's part of their reputation. The strain for Apple has been that we're talking about millions of applications. We're talking about millions of updates. We're talking about millions of lines of code. So there's a lot more for them to vet. I think Apple has a general responsibility to make sure that the apps being published aren't malicious and they're not like overly insecure where people can just go and access private information. But Apple also, it's kind of a really mixed responsibility with the developer because developers can add like an arbitrary key that Apple probably isn't going to know is sensitive and they're not able to really check each app for these different types of sensitive keys. So the, the developer has this huge responsibility to make sure they're not like pushing environment variables or secrets or things like that. Have you disclosed the findings to Apple? The normal way we would go about this uh, usually, fill out responsible disclosure. We would give all the details of what we found, uh, what could be exploited, what is a danger to the developer of the app or a service. Give them like at least a month to fix it. Uh, we give up to half a year if the vulnerability is really hard to fix. In this case, I don't see it as an issue in Apple's services. It's not a vulnerability in Apple's services. It is an issue, but not a vulnerability. Testing mobile apps, especially like iOS apps, has always been a little difficult because there's a lot of people who benefit from like reverse engineering random apps. Like if you're someone who runs like Snapchat bots or Instagram bots, you want to get the latest version of the app, decompile it, pull out all the endpoints, and then build bots around those things. So over time, it's gotten really, really complicated actually to pull apart these apps to find like different endpoints inside these apps. So in my experience, like you really need to be familiar with things like Frida and like these reverse engineering tools. If you really want to be able to like go in disable SSL pinning, and then like actually rip apart these apps. So what can iPhone users do to prevent their secrets from being breached? Some good ways to look into if an app is secure uh, would be A, are they like open source? If it's like a chat app, do they use like end-to-end -end encryption? If it's like a payment app, make sure that the bank that they're using is like pretty good and pretty popular in the area. There's a lot of different ways uh, you could kind of guesstimate the security of an app, but uh, before you look into it, uh, you can really be sure. But also there are a lot of other ways that you could improve your privacy and security, like using password managers, using like data deletion services, using like services like Incogni for removing your data from like data brokers. Get rid of that information. That's what our company does. We're going out to the people who are collecting that information from apps, buying it and selling it, and we're removing that out there. The lower your footprint, the less likely you are to be attacked. Giving your information out will eventually come back to hurt you. So give out as little as you can, and then go out and remove as much as you can to protect yourself. But as an iPhone user myself, it all still sounds pretty terrifying to me, even with those precautions. And it makes me look differently at all the random apps that companies, restaurants, and events are constantly asking you to download all the time. All right, so the elephant in the room, are you an iPhone user? Not my main device. Uh, I do have a, an iPhone for testing, for testing security of apps. I basically disagree with the way Apple tries to like control how much you can do and how much you can't. They basically decide what's good for you. That might not necessarily be always correct. I'm all mad. I trust Apple for a lot of the privacy. I just don't trust them completely and I verify. 
Yeah, I'm definitely an iPhone user. Um, I, I love my iPhone because of like the different like data protection and lockout modes. I've I've been uh, like apprehended in uh, TSA or like traveling at the border where they've actually taken my device. And I think it helps a lot to just be able to really quickly lock down the device where it's like a long pen code. It deletes the encryption keys when you lock it and then you can just pass it off and you feel good about it. So I guess at the end of the day, all of the hype around Apple security is just that. And when it comes to protecting your secrets, the only person you can trust is yourself. And of course, cyber news. If you want us to test more stuff, please subscribe to our channel. The bigger we grow, the more we can do. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.